Experts warn that building an entirely new supply chain, one capable of competing with China, that is, could take decades, and it will. As Benchmark Minerals Intelligence Adam Webb notes, the United States can just turn the tap and start producing more rare earth metals. New deposits must be found, environmental reviews passed, facilities built, and refining capacities developed. In the meantime, China's leverage remains firm, and it's not going away anytime soon, which is what Trump learned the hard way several weeks ago when the U.S. delegation met their counterparts from China for talks in London. In response to U.S. tariffs, Beijing recently rolled out new export restrictions, specifically targeting heavy rare earths, which are even more difficult to process, by the way. These materials are vital for military systems, and the United States currently has no alternative sources. That move triggered panic in Washington. Two rounds of emergency talks followed, and uh, after weeks of negotiations, China's Commerce Ministry agreed to resume rare earth export approvals. In exchange, Washington pledged to cancel a series of restrictive measures against China. It was a stark reminder, of course, despite all its economic and military might, the United States cannot operate without cooperation with a country it's increasingly at odds with, and the same country that it just designated as its main adversary, no less. It would have been wise to think and to plan ahead first before going on these quite silly PR campaigns. This geopolitical tug of war isn't just about trade, it's about global power. China has turned rare earth into a weapon of influence, a strategic lever that it can pull at will.